Hello there! In this short video I will show you how to install and configure all the tools required for building all the source code for our Intel 8188 computer. You can find a similar video for installing uh, all the tools for the Raspberry Pi Pico uh, because we're using it as well in the computer as the multi-IO controller. Some tools are common for both, so obviously it's enough for you to configure it once using one of the videos. Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, I'm using Windows Sandbox here for that. It allows me to configure everything from scratch because it effectively is a Windows system uh, like you would see uh, on the first run after installing. There is nothing configured yet. Uh, the only thing I did uh, on the system is to open a few web pages with the tools we need just to save time for me typing the, uh, the links in. And obviously the first thing we need to install are the compilers, the GCC for 16-bit Intel and the, the assembler, the NASM. That's my GitHub web page. It's a fork of the original one. The only change I made is to just uh, a few details in the scripts allowing us to build both 32-bit and 64-bit Windows versions of the of the binaries, and also the original uh, the original repo doesn't have Windows binaries built, so you, you would need to. Uh, uh, set up everything uh, using Linux and uh, in order to build them. I did it for you and that's why the fork. So um, once you've come to my GitHub page, you would need to scroll down and find the link to the releases. And there you go. We've got both 32 and 64 bit versions. I will download this one. Now when we open it, we just need to simply uh, unzip it into a, an empty folder. Let's say I will create uh, a new folder, let's say tools. And inside this, we will just unzip the whole folder containing all the GCC binaries and all the libraries. Now, once we've done this, we need to go inside the bin folder and then copy the path and then open the system settings, which the simplest way is to go run and then type sysdm.cpl. That will show us the system properties. Then we go to advanced and environment variables. And then we edit the path variable just by adding the, the path to the GCC bin folder. We just copy it from uh, the Explorer there. And there we're, we're done for now. Okay. We can keep the small window here because we'll need it a few times more. Okay. So the next step, that's done. The next step is to download the NASM, the assembler. So uh, let's go to this web page. All the links will be also in the description of this video. Let's now just um, click on the latest version, which is Windows 64 these days. You can either install it or just unzip it. Uh, so I'll use the, the zip file and very similarly, we just copy the uh, folder to our tools and the same thing we just copy the whole path to the nasm.exe and add it again to the path here close it down if you want to make sure that everything is okay we can again uh, go run open the command line and then type simply NASM. And if you get uh, anything like that, it means that the NASM is there. Uh, if I just type something else like misspelled NASM, you obviously get that it's not recognized as a command. So that's done. Let's go now to the make. Make 
It's the GNU uh, building tool, very popular on Linux, but there is a version for Windows, which we're downloading right now. And it's a uh, just executable, which you need to run in order to install it. Okay, so that's done. It's somewhere in program files uh, folder, the usual one. Uh, but the only thing we need to still we need to do is to navigate there and add the path to the variable again in the system. So copy that, open this again, edit path and add as yet another value. Okay, we're done with the make. Now, very first versions of my uh, source code for the for the original series contained make files for building, uh, but then I replaced them with CMake projects. CMake is not a building tool, it's just a kind of software which generates uh, scripts for all the building tools possible, including the make. Uh, so we're using it to simplify the process of building and both make and CMake are the common tools which we will use between the Intel 16-bit compilation process as well as the ARM for Raspberry Pi Pico. So we need those to develop for both platforms. Uh, so let's go to download page, then find a suitable uh, installer there you go and just open the file in order to install it usual stuff uh, here is a, a quite important thing uh, that's one step uh, fewer for us because you can uh, uh, already add cmake uh, to the system path so let's do that we don't need to do this manually Okay, we're done with CMake, so that's uh, effectively everything you really need to build uh, the source code. Uh, but obviously, if you want to have a look and edit and uh, maybe uh, develop yourself, you would need a an IDE, which is very helpful and um, doesn't require you to remember all the CMake commands to generate the project and then build it. So I would recommend you to. Uh, use Visual Studio Code, which I'm using, and all the scripts are already there for VS Code. So let's um, download it. And the usual stuff, just simply install it. Okay, it just says that I'm an administrator on this computer. I'm using the user version of the setup. It doesn't matter. I still want to go on. You can... Um, download a version for uh, for all users and again it, this adds uh, visual uh, studio code to path which is not that important for us but it helps and we don't need to do this ourselves by the way if you are a Winget fan as i am i will also show you on screen all the Winget uh, uh, commands to install the tools which are available on Winget. Um, so we don't need to go through all the GUI uh, installing it. Okay, so we're done here, but we need some extension to help us uh, developing for C++. So let's go to the extensions and find something called C++ extension. Uh, extension pack by Microsoft. Just install that. Okay, it looks like we're done here. We can close it down before just uh, downloading a uh, source code. So I just opened my repo for the Intel 188 uh, computer. Uh, you can use Git, of course, and just check it out and clone it from uh, my GitHub. But just for this demonstration, I'll simply download the zip file. And when I open it, then we will maybe not 
tools maybe we'll create another folder you can of obviously you can um use any path you want i'll just create quickly um a source folder and i will unzip the whole repo uh, into this folder so now once we've got uh, this repo unzipped let's open our vs code and um, let's navigate open folder and then let's navigate to the path we unzipped our source code to the bios level here and then select folder and do i trust myself yes i do and now we've got um, the list of uh, the tool chains uh, visual studio code found on our system obviously currently it's only the the gcc the correct one by the way if it's if it wasn't in the path it wouldn't be found so make sure you add it to path to the system path and if it's not appearing or you forgot to do this and then you add it to path you can always do the scan for kits and then if it doesn't show up here uh, you can choose the correct tool chain here once you've done it you should be able to simply build the project press f7 and there you go well it says build completed and finished with exit code zero probably and hopefully it means that it was a success let's go into uh, inside the bios folder we should find the build folder which contains among uh, others like uh, listing in assembler which i'm using very often the map file and stuff you will find bios.bin which is 128 binary uh, flat file which is ready for you to use with your uh, programmer to burn your flash memory many people have asked me in the comments under my videos how do i program the the flash memory our rom of our computer well obviously once you build the the binary file uh, using the method I just showed you. You need to use one of those universal programmers which support those flash memories. Uh, like, for example, that one, the T48, very popular on the internet and easy to buy from uh, multiple websites. I'm not being paid for um, uh, recommending this one. Uh, it's just the one I am using. And then you go to the software included with the, uh, with the programmer. Uh, like this one you load the binary file we just produced so it's some um, c src our repo and then bios and then build and we choose the 128 kilobytes bios.bin file we open it in this um in this window you can see the data in the file the first half are only ffs we're not using the first half of the of the flash and you can also see starting with the 64 kilobytes offset you start to see some code which is our initialization code for our computer and also at the bottom you can see the last 16 bytes which our intel uh, starts from after reset so yeah it's all ready to be programmed you just connect your programmer to the usb port of your computer and then hit program that's it for this video uh, if you want to know how to install things for the raspberry pi pico you can find a very similar short video on my channel take care and see you next time